You might have heard about the success of AI stocks last year and would like to participate, right? Or do you feel challenged by the complexity of the stock market and you would like to solve the puzzle? Or perhaps you just want to make some extra money to buy a fancy watch, a car, or the new Apple Vision. In this video, I'm giving four tips for people who have just started out trading in the hope that they will avoid the mistakes I did when I first started investing in stocks. Indeed, when I first started investing in stocks uh, 15 years ago, I made mistakes that led to significant losses. And I don't want to say I wish someone told me, because as a matter of fact, someone did. The thing is that there is a overwhelming amount of information online and in YouTube for people that start trading stocks. So here I'd like to summarize four main tips that based on my experiences and the losses I have experienced when I first started investing, I'm hoping that will help uh, investors, beginner investors, to minimize the risks of losing money and maximize the chances of success. And I'm not talking about diversification, goal, strategy and stuff. That those are things you can find, you know, in books and you can find online everywhere. I'm talking about my own experience and uh, in real life examples that I can, uh, I can just give you over in this video. And if you feel like my tips are helping you or somehow, you know, they add values uh, to your investments, please do subscribe. I just started out this channel and uh, as you can see, I don't have many subscribers. So, your help is really appreciated. And one important note, this information is not a financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. I'm just sharing you what I have learned from my tradings and my investments. So my first advice is know the road you're taking. Losing money is a stressful experience. If you're not ready to lose money and even to lose everything you're investing in stocks, then stock investing might not be for you. When you invest in stocks, there are real losses and potential losses. You have a real loss when, for example, you invest a thousand dollars in Tesla and the price of the stock of a single stock is one hundred dollars. And, uh, and then after a week, the price goes down to ninety dollars. So you have a potential loss of 10 percent. Now, which, which in this case is, you know, hundred dollars. Now, if you sell the stock, you have a real loss. If you don't sell the stock, you have a potential loss and potential losses are actually, in my personal opinion, they're actually more stressful than real losses. Because when you do lose, um, hundred dollars, that's it. You lost it. You might feel upset about it. Uh, but that's it. It's gone. When you have potential losses, when you start checking your phone constantly and uh, you start thinking about it and you're kind of disappointed that during the weekend, the stock market is closed. And, uh, and you know, this is the typical situation of you going out with your girlfriend and going to cinema and you check your phone constantly and uh, she get upset because she thinks that you're not enjoying the time with her. And, you know, there is this uh, episode of Seinfeld where Jerry and George invest in stocks, they both get very stressful and uh, Jerry is a little bit more, uh, more insecure and uh, he, he sells the stocks earlier, experiencing a uh, small loss. And uh, George keeps the stock for a long time, trusting his friend. And then at the end, he has a big loss. And stock, what stock? Did you ever meet my friend Simons? Maybe. He knows this guy Wilkinson. He made a fortune in the stock market. Now he's got some new thing. You know, it was supposed to be a big merger. He wasn't even supposed to say anything. I do love this episode because it does really summarize what happens in the stock market. And, you know, the up and downs that people experience, particularly at the beginning of their uh, stock investing uh, journey. So I'd, I'd say that there are four signs that show that you're addicted to to stocks. If you're experiencing one of the signs, uh, I would say that you should probably stop. So the first sign is something I discussed earlier, and that's when you constantly check your phone and uh, probably when you shouldn't, like when you're on social events, 
you're with friends, you're with your girlfriend, or you're just at home and check the phone every hour, that makes no sense. Another sign is when you start talking about stocks with people that actually don't care about it. So, you know, you're so into it and you're so passionate and uh, you want to share your knowledge. Or either way, you know, you're worried. Your portfolio is going down a lot. And, uh, you know, you just want to talk to someone about it. All these people are like, what is he talking about? You know, and uh, they're not into stocks. They don't want to hear these things. And uh, this is actually a good sign that you should probably stop. Another another sign is when you do things impulsively. So you do buy stocks just because you heard uh, about it. And I'll do talk later on about my investment strategy and uh, the researches I do before buying or selling stocks. And, uh, but you know, ju- just as a reminder, uh, whenever you buy a stock and I haven't done your research, it's probably going to be bad. And lastly, Another sign is when you like all stocks. So if I tell you Tesla, you like it, you think it's gonna, it's gonna raise in price incredibly in the next few years. If I tell you about Amazon, you think the AI will help this company to make the double of uh, profits in the next few years. If I take, tell you about another type of stock, you like it. When you start liking it, all the stocks they tell you, that's a good sign you should do it. My tip number two is to remember that there are people making money out of your losses. So when I first start, uh, when I first started with stocks, I didn't know where, where to start. I didn't know which stocks to buy. So I rely on a stock picking service. It's actually a well known one. Uh, I just don't want to say the name. Um, and uh, the way how they work is that they give you some good trades and they do suggest some big, uh, l- some large companies for kind of, you know, for, uh, for, for giving you some gains and some feelings that they, their suggestions are right. And then they also include some small companies uh, that actually have no values at all. And, uh, you know, I want to be frank with you. I'm thinking that those companies might have some kind of agreements with them. Uh, so it's like, you just refer me as, you know, best stocks to buy today, next week, and uh, I'll give you X amount of stocks or X amount of money. I don't know. But what I can tell you for sure is that it didn't work and I, I have lost a significant amount of money. So, and I'm actually talking about stock picking services and the ones I'm referring right now is actually a leading company, a leader company in this kind of service. And another type of, you know, type of source you shouldn't rely on is buy and sell signals. Um, The way how to work is slightly different. They only advise penny stocks and timing is everything. Anyways, there are lots of videos in YouTube explaining how this scam works. Uh, so I'm just, you know, leaving a section of a video that already explains it. In both cases, my suggestion is don't trust the service. So in reality, they don't really work because they rely on uh, one firm or one analyst. And uh, in many years of uh, investing, I have found successful instead and rely on uh, collective data. So what I do is to collect the portfolio data of over 10,000 traders, select the best ones. So I filter those portfolio for those traders that have gained over 30% in the last uh, 24 months. So once I have this selection of top traders, I look into their portfolio and I search for common holdings. So l- let's make uh, an example. 10,000 traders, 100 are the best ones because they scored more than 30% gains in the last 24 months. 60% of them uh, holds Amazon. And Amazon represents 10% of their portfolio in average. I would say that Amazon is a really good stock to buy right now. 
so I don't rely on a single person or a single firm. Rather, you know, I collect data and analyze it. Since this methodology has been really successful for me, I have decided to, to sell it. So if you're interested in learning more about the methodology, or you just would like to, to know which are the best stocks that come up uh, as a result of those researches, uh, you can go to the link uh, I'm placing below and uh, you can learn more about it. And, you know, sometimes people claim to be successful investors or successful traders and, uh, and they're not. So you might follow those people and uh, in reality, you're getting bad advices. For example, I have this friend, his name is uh, Samuel, uh, and, uh, you know, we had a call and it was like, you know, in 2019, I made more than a million trading stocks. So I was kind of, you know, shocked, say, all right, I'm talking with, uh, you know, uh, a genius, uh, stock genius, and I'm like, give me some devices, which stocks shall we buy this year? And, uh, and, and he did give some insights. But then later on, uh, we discussed further, uh, you know, this topic. And it was like, yeah, in 2019, I made more than a million. But in 2020, I lost two millions. And in 2021, uh, I lost $500,000 or whatever. So, you know, just because people claim to make millions trading stocks or investing in stocks doesn't make them gurus. Um, you still have to do your researches about it. And, you know, and this is the tip number two I'm giving. Uh, I'm summarizing it. Just don't trust uh, stock recommendations given from a single person, a single firm, or a small group of analysts. Do trust stock recommendation from a large number of top investors. So let's talk about my tip number three. Now, of course, when I decided to make this video, I searched in YouTube and watched uh, some of the, you know, first video that appeared in the, in the searches just to see what other people would suggest and uh, how they would structure the video as well. And one thing there was common that everyone suggested, and I, and I mean literally everyone, is to use a paper, paper trading account. Well, my tip number three is don't use a paper trading account. Now, just to make sure we are synchronized on definitions, let's define what a paper account is. A paper account, often referred as a trading account, is a simulated trading platform where individuals can practice buying and selling securities without risking real money. This type of account uses virtual funds, allowing users to experiment with trading strategies, learning how the stock market works, and understand the mechanism of trading without the financial risk of losing money. Paper accounts are commonly used by beginners to gain experience and by more seasoned investors and traders to test new strategies before implementing them in the markets. Now, the thing is that I believe that 0. Point something percent of traders can really develop a strategy that can beat the market. I think for the rest of us, uh, there are no rules. I mean, the, the market has no rules and uh, there are no real strategies that we can develop to, to beat the market, except, as I said before, a coping portfolio of successful investors. I mean, picking stocks from uh, analyzing thousands of portfolios of successful investors. And now, the reason why I don't advise using uh, paper trading accounts is that you might have um, a wonderful paper trading account. You might have a portfolio there that is making lots of money, but in reality, you're making no money at all. And uh, that is kind of a stressful situation to be in because you're, you feel like 
you would have performed extremely well in a real scenario. And uh, that generates a little bit of FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. And the first thing you would do in this situation, in my opinion, is that you would go and replicate those uh, stock acquisitions in a real scenario. So just look at the situation. You open a virtual portfolio and you're making money. And you, you're like, all right, I'm great. Why do I have to waste my time with the virtual portfolio? You copy all the trades you have in the virtual portfolio, which you made carefully over time in the real portfolio in an impulsive way. And you really risk to have um, bad investments. Maybe the stocks you selected are good, but the timing when you bought it, it was completely wrong because it was an impulsive uh, buy rather than, you know, a strategic one. And another thing to keep in mind is that when you're trading on a virtual account, you don't have all the emotions that you might have in a real account. So, you know, I mean, platforms like eToro gives you $100,000 in virtual credit and you put all the $100,000 in one stock, uh, I, AMD. And, you know, the stock raise 10% next week. So you're really happy about it and you want to switch to the real portfolio. But, you know, when the stock loses 10%, you're not really losing anything and uh, you know you're more willing to to wait you don't have that emotions that stress related with the losing money which is you know a big factor when you invest in stocks and uh, so you might be you know more relaxed and you might make the right decisions when you are in a virtual environment and you might not have those key behavior when you're dealing with a real environment so one reason why I don't advise to use the virtual account is the fact that you won't train those emotions that might lead you to, to losses. So as a beginner, the first thing you could, you would actually do is to learn how to control your emotions. And that is something that you can't learn on uh, um, a paper account. I do think that a uh, paper trading account can be useful uh, when you're not familiar with the uh, brokerage platform. Uh, for example, I start out with the eToro. You might be familiar with it. And then uh, in my early days, and then I switched to interactive broker that had 200 more functionalities compared to eToro. So I didn't even know how to sell a stock because there are like five different ways to, to sell stocks. And, you know, that was a good uh, case scenario to use a paper, paper trading account, uh, you know, to get familiar with the, with the platform, basically. But personally, once you have learned how to use the platform, I would switch to the, to the real, uh, real market, the real account for the reasons I already stated. So many people starting up with stocks think that being an investor and being a trader is the same thing. But in reality, that's not. In my experience, very few people can uh, can do both things, can be a good investors and being good traders. So my tip number four is just pick one or the other. You either want to be a trader or either want to be an investor. And let me explain you why. Are short-term focused. So they buy a stock and they sell it either in a few minutes or in, in a few weeks, but they don't keep it for a very long period of time. So in reality, they're not really investing in a company, but what they're doing is capitalizing on uh, market fluctuations. Uh, investors from another side, they're very long-term oriented, oriented. So they believe in a company and they actually invest in this company, uh, thinking that this company is doing great in the future. Uh, and so they can get, uh, higher, higher returns in the future. And we are normally talking from, uh, five to 10 years, uh, time frame. Traders often rely on technical analysis, which means basically finding price uh, patterns 
and uh, market fluctuation uh, to you know to capitalize better in the short term while investor looks into fundament fundamental analysis fundamental traders look into a technical analysis so they look into price patterns and market trends to try to capitalize in the short term while investors look into fundamental analysis so they really look into the from an accounting perspective into the the health and the growth perspective of the business also analyzing the competition and analyzing the product or service uh, that the company offers and as i said before uh, traders is normally a full-time job uh, traders constantly need to look into the market and making adjustments while investors they once they buy a stock that's pretty much it most of the work is already done they just need to check uh, earnings are very important of course and uh, just to make you know some follows up here and there uh, to rebalance the portfolio and you probably have noticed but I'm referring to trading as something stressful and I'm referring to traders as people that work full time. This is because when you decide to be a trader or to be an investor, you need to put into balance that trading can, can really require lots of your time. And if this is not profitable from the first months, all these hours you put an effort you put into trading could be dedicated into another activity, maybe more profitable, like starting up a new business. So do make your decision. And uh, if you, the distinction between trading and investing is not clear to, to you, please do not start putting money into the stock market. This is a really crucial point and it should be clarified before even starting putting one dollar in uh, in the stock market we reached the end of this video just as a quick summary be ready to lose money and uh, in general know what you're doing stock trading is a stressful experience it can be highly rewarding but you need to know exactly the exact risk that you're facing from day number one don't trust anyone don't trust stock picking services or people that tell you to buy this and that do your own research and uh, try to focus on uh, what a large number of successful investors buy very important choose the effort you want to to put on uh, on this journey from day number one so decide whether you want to be a trader or an investor and lastly uh, don't use paper trading accounts and uh, start dealing and training your emotion because this is a big uh, uh, limiting factor when you do stock trading so if you like this video please uh, leave a like and uh, subscribe thanks for watching